Now, Amnesty International is slamming the U.S. for a blatant attempt to influence a journalist case in Yemen. Now, if you think that the NDAA is something we don't have to worry about here in America because Obama said he would never do that, look at this case in Yemen. Here we have a journalist who was arrested at the behest of the Americans, and uh, Amnesty International is now condemning the White House for its role in detention of a Yemeni journalist who exposed U.S. involvement in a deadly 2009 cluster bombing. He talked about something they didn't want him to talk about. He was arrested in August 2010 on charges of helping al-Qaeda and militant U.S.-born cleric Anwar al-Awlaki and was found guilty six months later and convicted of five years in jail. Now, he has always denied the charges of cooperating with the terrorist group, insisting that he only did interviews with some of the members as part of his professional activity. This is exactly why Christopher Hedges, Chris Hedges of the New York Times, Pulitzer-winning reporter, has filed suit against the NDAA along with a lot of other people. He has often interviewed al-Qaeda, other people who would be terrorist targets of the U.S. government. And they could make the same claims against him that they've just made, against, that, well, they made several years ago against this Yemeni journalist to get Yemen to imprison him. The Yemen president has now just pardoned him and released him from prison. Along the lines of what happened with Michael Hastings, we look at their capability to hack into a car, which is, I think, an important part of that story that hasn't been looked at in nearly enough detail. There are more details coming about how the CIA can actually hack into other things, like medical devices, to make it look like accidents, but to assassinate people. This is something they've been working on for quite a long time. A hacker has died this week, just days before he was set to reveal how an ordinary pacemaker could be compromised to kill a man. Security researcher Barnaby Jack died Thursday and the details surrounding his death have yet to be released. Jack was scheduled to detail his most recent achievement in a black hat talk called Implantable Medical Devices, Hacking Humans. Jack said he was intrigued by the wireless communication of these very critical life devices and he wanted to see if they communicated securely or if a hacker could somehow control them remotely. After six months of research, Jack had figured out how to hack a device remotely, sending a high voltage shock from up to 50 feet away. At a previous Black Hat talk in 2012, Jack detailed how he was able to hack into an insulin pump and order the machine to deliver a lethal dose to patients and in turn kill them. Jack's death comes just over a month after the FDA warned that implanted medical devices such as pacemakers and defibrillators are often connected to networks that are vulnerable to cyber attacks that could shut down and manipulate the machinery. The FDA sent a report to hospitals that identified 300 medical devices at risk of crippling cyber attacks. And some of these devices can even be remotely accessed through the Internet. Black Hat is scheduled to begin Wednesday in Las Vegas with a presentation by NSA Chief General Keith Alexander. It will be immediately followed by the DEF CON Hacker Conference where researchers will demonstrate various high-profile hacks, including how modern cars can be compromised. For the InfoWars Nightly News, I'm Leanne McAdoo. Well, so we're talking about the government attacking journalists, both foreign and potentially domestic journalists, and as we believe they did attack Michael Hastings. We now have the trial of whistleblower Bradley Manning coming to a close. And it's interesting to take a look at the closing remarks of the prosecution as well as the defense on this. The Guardian is reporting, Bradley Manning sought notoriety, argues the prosecution in their closing remarks. And what the prosecutor said was that Bradley Manning transmitted this information to WikiLeaks, quote, out of a desire for notoriety and a callous state of mind. He cared only about himself. What he said was he delivered hundreds of thousands of documents ready to use to WikiLeaks, and he delivered them for notoriety. He searched for as much information as he knew would guarantee his fame. Okay, so he points out that the, he thinks that he's motivated by personal uh, ambition and aspirations of fame. But then he goes on to talk about things that would be completely different from that, uh, saying that he's doing this for a greater cause. He goes on to say, uh, well, first he says, the only human that PFC Manning actually cared about was himself, his callousness, and revealed his own chats but then he paints him as an idealistic anarchist. He says that uh, both he and Julian Assange are information anarchists. And he says that Manning identified WikiLeaks as the first intelligence agency for the general public. That doesn't sound like he's working 
for his own notoriety and personal gain. And then he says, he has a quote from Manning to Assange where he says, government organizations can't control information. The harder they try, the more violently the information wants to get out. That was what Manning said. That's not the words that the prosecutor put into his mouth, but the prosecutor thought that he was, was trying to, to convince the jury and the judge that he's working out of personal motivation rather than looking at a larger cause. You know, it doesn't hurt the security of America when information like that about uh, Henry Kissinger, where he said the illegal we do immediately, the unconstitutional takes a little bit longer. When that kind of information is revealed, the only people that get hurt with that are people like Henry Kissinger and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, people who serve the New World Order. Now, we've got an interview coming up after the break with a filmmaker who is trying to wake up judges and police officers in England with both an event and a documentary. It's an interesting approach. Stay tuned after the break. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show.